Aerobic exercise means we're increasing the blood flow and we're starting to work our aerobic capacity of our body. Now, the body has three levels. The first level is what we call the sugar level. So that's built-in glycogen in your body. So you have sugar stores so that when you start to exercise, they're instantly released into the bloodstream so that you can, you know, go that way. Um, so the, the blood has sugar in it right now, but that only lasts probably five to ten seconds. That's it. Then it's going to be used up. So we have this glycogen store that, that comes into play. That can last up to approximately 10 minutes that we can release this, this readily available glycogen, put it in our system. Depends on how fit you are. If you're an elite athlete, that might last up to 20 minutes at the, at the most. But if you're way out of shape, it might only be five minutes. Depends on how, how uh, fit you are and how much stores you have. But in order to hit that aerobic, the next level is the aerobic level where you're pu pulling in oxygen and you're creating new energy out of that oxygen. We want to hit that aerobic level. So you have to go longer than the glycogen level. And so that's going to vary quite a bit from person to person, but I say a great general level is 12 minutes. It, after 12 minutes, almost everybody, unless you're an elite athlete, almost everybody's going to be hitting that aerobic level. And so we want to hit that aerobic level. Does that mean that we have to be going at 95% max and we're pouring sweat and all that kind of stuff? Absolutely not. It, but it means we have to exercise for a minimum of 12 minutes. And I usually recommend, if you're, if you're kind of new to it, I recommend between 15 and 20 minutes. If you're kind of going for a while, it's, it's about 20 to 25 minutes, bless you. And if you're you know, kind of really looking to increase your aerobic capacity, it's between 25 to 35 or even 45 minutes. Here's the thing though, what happens when you are under a lot of stress in your body? What happens? You become stressed out. What happens internally? Cortisol. Cortisol. So your body has a stress response. So if I'm under a lot of stress, my brain is bombarded with stress responses and my sympathetic system goes off and I eventually release the, the hormone cortisol. What happens if I'm stressed physically? Same thing happens. Cortisol. What happens if I'm stressed chemically? Same thing happens. Cortisol. Stress is not just emotional or mental stress. Stress is anything that causes that system to work. Working out long periods of time causes higher levels of cortisol. Like running a marathon is a very stressful thing. Maybe not to those Kenyans and all those guys, but, but for most of us, that would be a tremendously hard, stressful thing on our body. So you have to balance that some, some level. If you're going too hard, too long, too much, and you're sore afterwards and you're, you know, you're drained, it's good for the aerobic system, but bad for the the, the sympathetic system, the, the stress system. So in general, when you want to work out, you want to work out anywhere from 12 minutes minimum to probably 20 to 25 minutes maximum. You don't want to do the same level for that entire time. Who's ever heard of burst training? Yeah, I taught burst training for a lot. So you want to go harder, slower, harder, slower, harder, slower. Never letting your body catch up. You get really winded, but then you give yourself a chance to get back, and then you go really winded and get back. Most of those, if you've ever seen those, uh, those uh, machines that at the gym, either they, they can be the treadmill, they can be the elliptical, or they can be the bike, or they can be all sorts of things, but they all have those programs on it, right? And the programs look like this. They're, they're trying to burst you, and that's, that's the best way to aerobically exercise. If you go for a walk, and you're with other people, you say, okay, for the next 30 seconds, we're going to go f hard. And you walk fast. And you don't talk. Because if, if you're able to talk, you're not doing it fast enough. Right? You should be out of breath. Hey, did you see that? <laughs> yeah. You know? It doesn't work. So you walk for 30 seconds, and then the next 30 seconds, you slow down. You let your heart rate come down a little bit, and then you go again. You're working your aerobic system. After you burn all that glycogen out of your system, which is a very healthy thing, now you're going to start working that aerobic thing. You know that you've gone too hard 
when you hit the ketone uresis or ket the ketones and it's for me it's a it's a taste in the back of my throat when i'm going too hard and i know i'm going too hard i start to taste that little it's almost like an acidic thing you can smell it on your skin you know you athletes you know that feeling right so that's that's where your system is overloaded it's not making energy all the time it's actually breaking down and creating ketones and putting them into your blood that's when you have to take a step back go a little slower try not to be in that range too much a little bit is okay a little bit is actually healthy but a lot too much not so healthy